what's up everybody welcome this is a special road edition of martial arts radio haven't done one of these in a while i'm not sure what episode number this is i think well just in case it changes i won't say anything let's do the intro okay so if you're new to the show you might want to check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com that's where we post all of our episodes Everything we've ever done, episode-wise, is there for free. We've got transcripts, we've got links, we've got photos, sometimes there's video. Everything's arranged by subject and style. And For the guest interviews, which we do on Mondays, uh, there's a navigation menu for where they're from. Lots of stuff. If you haven't been over there recently, check it out. You can sign up for the newsletter while you're there, too. If you haven't been to whistlekick.com, that's our digital hub for everything we've got going on. Of course, there's links to things like Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio, links to Marshall Journal, Journal, ugh, I can't talk, Marshall Journal, MarshallJournal.com, our online content site where we have people writing about martial arts, and it's all for free. There's no advertisement on there. Nobody gets paid. It's great. It's a wonderful site. Check it out. But what else do we have at WhistleKick.com? We've got our store where we have all of our products from our protective equipment to our uniforms, t-shirts, sweatshirts, pants, hats, a lot of cool stuff over there. And if you use the code PODCAST15, that'll get you 15% off everything in the store. So, let's talk about today's subject. Today we're talking about the mindset of the beginner martial artist. This is probably going to be a two or a three part series. Today we're gonna talk about the beginners. We might talk about intermediate, I'm not quite sure how that one's going to play out, but then we'll definitely do one, the advanced martial artist. So let's talk about the mindset of the beginner martial artist. And I'm thinking about someone who's really, really new. Now, if you haven't been a new martial arts student for a while, you might have forgotten what that felt like. Maybe you started when you were really young. So your understanding now is completely gone. You just completely forgot what it was like to be maybe five years old and starting class or even 40 years old or 80 years old in starting class. To start martial arts is kind of a big deal because if you've never done martial arts before, you aren't quite sure what you're in for. Anybody who starts anything is nervous, they're scared. And getting yourself to show up to something is the hardest part. If you're a parent, if you have children, you know that sometimes getting a child to do something new can be really, really difficult. And it takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of encouragement, maybe some bribery, some bargaining to get them to try something new. And they're not even doing it willingly. They're just kind of begrudgingly agreeing, okay, I'm going to show up to this thing and not cause a scene. I'm changing lanes. Why is it important to understand what's going on in the head, excuse me, of the beginner martial artist? Because the better you understand them, the better you can relate to them, the better you can teach them, the better you can help them grow and make it beyond the beginner stage. So for purposes of argument, let's move past the part, everything up to them showing up. What's it like when they first walk in the door? Because you don't have any real say over what goes on before they walk in the door. So that new martial artist walks in the door and they've probably never been in that space before. They've probably never been in any martial arts space before. So they're looking around, they're seeing sparring equipment, maybe they're seeing some wooden boards, maybe some broken boards in a pile. There might be some heavy bags. There's probably a class going on or people getting ready for a class. And it is overwhelming. It is downright scary. Because most of us like to be good at things. We like to understand things. We like to have that sense of comfort that comes with, if not control, at least being able to comprehend what's happening. And when you're a new person stepping into a martial arts class for the first time, you don't understand, you don't comprehend, and you're definitely not good at it. You might get somebody once in a while who thinks, yeah, I'm gonna be great at this, but that's not most people. That's not 98% of people vast majority of people acknowledge that this is going to be different and new and scary and hopefully fun. So on top of the 
confusion and the fear, there's some hope. What are they hoping for? They're hoping that they're going to learn something. They're hoping that they're going to enjoy it. Beyond that, everybody has hopes, but they're much more individualized. It comes down to their why. Why have they shown up that day? Are they looking to get better at self-defense, to protect themselves? Are they looking to get in better shape, to lose some weight? Are they looking to develop a new skill or meet new people? Everybody's why is slightly different because it's not just one thing, it's a variety of things. The best thing to do when you meet someone who has just walked in that door is to say hello, to be friendly. Don't bow to them. Introduce yourself in a friendly way. Here's what I do. When I meet a new student, if it's in the context of me teaching, where I know it's important for me to uphold rank, I will tell them, hi, my name's Jeremy, but when we're in class, you need to call me Mr. Lesniak. And they get that. If I'm talking to an adult, I might change it a little bit. Hi, my name's Jeremy, nice to meet you. In the context here, I go by Mr. Lesniak as part of our protocol. And they'll say, oh, okay. And they'll appreciate that you've told them that. It's what happens in a lot of schools. Hi, I'm Mr. Lesniak. Well, that's weird. Nobody else introduces themselves out in the world like that. Even teachers these days seem to be a little more resistant to introducing themselves that way. You know, academic teachers. So what else is going on in their head? They start their first class, and they're doing their best to copy everything that's going on, but everything that they're doing is different. The way you start class, the, the bowing in, maybe there's some kind of pledge or, or uh, verbal component, and then they start doing movements, and it's all foreign to them. And if you're talking about kids, they have a hard enough time connecting their body to their mind with things that they get. How often have you walked a, watched a small child just fall over while walking? It happens all the time. Now you're asking them to do things that they've never seen before, and let's face it, they're probably doing a terrible job at them. So what do we do? We understand that, and we say, hey, you're making a good effort. We make sure we pay special attention to them. We make sure that the fear, the discomfort, the concern over not getting things right, is as limited as possible because we're showing them support, we're showing them positivity, we're showing them that we care because that matters. We want them to know that we care. We want them to know that we want them to stick around and get better and keep coming back. We want them to know that we value who they are and that recognize that they made a, a, took a risk in coming into class. Now everything that we've just talked about happens more than the first day. It's not just the first day that they walk in there. It happens for a long period of time. And everybody, everybody's feelings like this last different lengths. For some people it might be a couple weeks, for others it might be years. It fades. It doesn't just go away one day tends to drift out. So you want to pay attention and make sure that you're acknowledging that and giving them the, the support that they need. If you're an instructor, you know everybody needs different amounts of support, different types of instruction. So knowing where they're at, being able to read between the lines and see how much of what they're doing is coming from a place of concern or fear helps you interact with them, teach them accordingly. It's critical. It's one of the most important things to getting them to stick around, to retain that student, and move them up to the intermediate or the advanced ranks. If you take away nothing else from this episode, I want you to remember that no matter how friendly you are, how kind and compassionate the people in your school are, 
person walking in the door is afraid, don't do things to add to their fear. Do things to give them comfort. And if you focus on that, they'll stick around and they'll move on up to who knows what. The more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm pretty sure, yeah, I think we'll do an intermediate episode. So I'm probably going to turn this off, take a short break, and then I'll be back for, we'll call it part two, the mindset of the intermediate martial artist. Head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, get a transcript for this. Uh, we'll probably do an audio-only episode as well. For those of you that are used to seeing this only in audio, the video is going to be up at YouTube. And whistlekick.com, you can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. Sign up for the newsletter. We send out a couple a month. There's some fun stuff in there. There's content that's available nowhere else in the newsletter. If you want to follow us on social media, I hope you do. We put a lot of effort into our social media. At Whistlekick, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Those are the main places. And my personal email address, jeremy at whistlekick.com. would love to hear from you. I hope you have a great day. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.